Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome dear students, today we discuss one of the important topic of corporate law and this is the last topic of this course, winding up of the companies. Basically the companies start their life with the certificate of incorporation and the end of the company comes with the winding up. I am Dr. Jaswan Saini, Associate Professor in faculty of law md university rohtak present this topic before you as usual we start with learning outcomes these outcomes define what we learn after discuss this entire topic and what's our understanding touch the milestone very first to learn the different grounds and circumstances under which a company can be wound up. So, grounds and circumstances we learn from this entire discussion including insolvency, just and equitable grounds or tribunal directed winding up creating awareness of the legal criteria for initiating the process. Winding up basically a process where we convert all the assets into cash and this cash distribute among the members and what are the grounds, either the grounds acceptable by court or not. So, each and everything we discuss in detail. Secondly, to gain an understanding of the various process involved in the liquidation process from the appointment of a liquidator to the distribution of assets providing insights into the steps and procedure. So, two words here, one is steps and procedure that follow the initiation of winding up as provided under Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code 2016. This is a new code introduced by central government and through this code, the right to exit provided by central government to all businesses. And third one, to understand the rights of various stakeholders including creditors, contributories and employees during the winding up process. So, basically winding up is a process where all the property converted into cash and that distribute among all stakeholders. Either you claim as a creditor or either you claim as a employee. So, these all things we discuss in this chapter, winding up of a company defined as a process by which the life of the company comes to be an end. Company life start with the certificate of incorporation and the life of the company end with the winding up and the property of the company administered for the benefit of all stakeholders who are involved in the journey of company. An administrator called liquidator and this liquidator appointed to control the affairs of the company in the better interest of company and in the better interest of all stakeholders. And finally, the function of this administrator to distribute all the property among the claimants distribute any surplus among the members in accordance with their rights, in accordance with their claims. You are bound to be distributed as per the procedure of law. Section 294A, generally section 2 of each and every act after independence that relates to definition clauses and section 294A inserted later on this Companies Act 2013 and that is define the definition of winding up. Winding up means winding up under this act 
or liquidation under the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code 2016. Both type of processes involved in the definition of winding up as defined in section 294A. The procedure of winding up of companies are provided under chapter 20 of the Companies Act 2013 and Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code 2016. From this discussion we draw a conclusion two acts are applicable on winding up. One is Companies Act, second one is Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code 2016. Winding up ultimately leads to the dissolution. So, winding up is the first stage and second stage is here dissolution. Dissolution is considered as second stage and winding up is considered as first stage. In a winding up process, we convert property into cash and dissolution is the last stage of the winding up. After dissolution, company not stand in the eyes of law. Difference between winding up and dissolution, there are a lot of difference between these two terms. A company is said to be dissolved when it ceases to exist as a corporate entity. Company considered as a juristic personality in the eyes of law as and when company obtained the certificate of incorporation and the life of company comes to an end with dissolution, dissolve and there is no corporate entity survive, corporate entity status comes to an end. Dissolution of the company's name shall be struck off by the registrar from the register of companies. What is the effect of this dissolution? Name of the company struck down by ROC from their company's register and this activity published by ROC in the official gazette. So, entire process of the government or the government office is governed by this official gazette and that also known as gazette notification. Winding up is one of the method of dissolution. Dissolution is the final destination in a winding up process and lot of methods of a winding up. So, winding up is one of the method of dissolution of a company whereas, dissolution is the end result of winding up. Winding up is the starting process to end the life of the company. Dissolution is the final activity of this entire process. Legal entity of the company continues at the commencement of the winding up, whereas dissolution brings about an end of the legal entity. During the process of winding up, corporate status of the company survive as it is and this status the company lost only and only after dissolution order pass and this order of dissolution also published in official gazette. A company may be allowed to continue its business so far necessary for the benefit of entire stakeholders. So, in case of dissolution a company ceases to be exist. After dissolution there is no any survival ship of the company. During the winding up company survive for the benefit of the stakeholders. So, modes of winding up a company may be wound up in any of the following two ways. In the 1956 act company wind up with three modes winding up voluntary, winding up under the supervision of court and third one compulsory winding up. But after introducing Companies Act 2013 and Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code 2016, there are two modes remaining here. One is winding up by tribunal which refer in section 270, 271 and 272. These three sections deals with the winding up by the tribunal and this winding up is also known as compulsory winding up. Winding up under the order of tribunal is also known as compulsory winding up and second type of winding up deals by insolvency and bankruptcy code 2016. 
and before this implementation of this code, the winding up voluntarily deals by Companies Act section 304 to 323. But nowadays, the entire process of these sections transfer to this court. Now provided under section 59 of Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code deals with the voluntary winding up. So, the regulations made by the institution in 2017, after 2017, this process comes under the purview of Insolvency and, Bank and Bankruptcy Code 2016. Winding up by the tribunal is the deal by part 1 of chapter 20 of the Companies Act and it is also known as compulsory winding up. Now, we discuss circumstances in which company may be wound up by tribunal, which define in section 271. If the company pass a special resolution for this particular purpose and resolve that company may be wound up by the tribunal, in such cases this section become operative. If the company has acted against the interest of sovereignty, integrity of the India and security of the state and against the friendly relations with foreign states and against the public order, against the decency or against the morality. These are the grounds on which tribunal may pass the order of winding up under section 271. Of if on an application made by the registrar or any other person authorized by the central government, that is also one of the ground of winding up of the company. ROC is also authorized to file a petition for winding up and third person, other person means third person is also authorized, if the authorized by central government for this particular purpose. Tribunal if satisfied opinion word indicate that tribunal is of the opinion that the affairs of the company have been conducted in fraudulent manner. In such cases, tribunal never hesitate to pass the order of winding up. The company was formed and fraudulent and unlawful purpose, formed for fraudulent and unlawful purpose. If in the opinion of tribunal it said that company established for these purpose, fraudulent purpose or unlawful purpose. In such cases, tribunal never hesitate to pass the order of finding up. The person concerned in the formation or management of its affairs have been guilty of fraud, misfeasance or misconduct. So, one fraud, second misfeasance, third misconduct. Out of these three areas, if any area touch in the formation or the formation affected with any of the them, in such cases tribunal pass an order of winding up. If the company has made a default in filing the registrar its financial statement or annual return for immediately preceding 5 financial years. So, this is also one of the ground and that is important each and every company must file their statements or annual returns as and when required by the ROC or the stock exchanges. But this is amounts to offence if you fail to submit this return within stipulated period and the clearly mentioned that if you fail to submit these returns of preceding 5 years, that is also become a ground of winding up. And another is a tribunal opinion that it is just and equitable. Being a student of law, you must understand just and equitable, there is no any definition given by any law on this point just and equitable. Just and equitable basically we decide on the basis of circumstances. Just and equitable, we draw the conclusion with judicial pronouncement and what practices followed by the judiciary on this ground just and equitable, we find out some areas 
where court apply this clause of just and equitable. First is oppression of minority. Oppression of minority, you know it is very well. The basic principle of company law govern that company take every decision in the meetings and in the meetings decision taken by majority. But if majority take any decision to suppress the minority, this activity is known as oppression. If any act of majority that is for the purpose of suppress the rights of minority that amounts to oppression. If any such complaint that is a fit case of just and equitable. Second deadlock in management. For example, in a company there are only two directors and there is no any speaking terms between both directors. That is the position of deadlock rise and in such cases there is no option either to close the business. So, this is also one of the case which decided by judicial pronouncement that that is the case under just and equitable. And another is loss of substratum. So, main ground, main object if lost there, there is not possible to run the company with this main object. Where the object for which a company was constituted have either failed or become substantially impossible to be carried out their business with this object. In such cases, there is the ground or cover under just and equitable. When main object of the company lost due to the government policies, due to the latest circumstances or due to any reason that cover under the heading of loss of substratum and that is also a ground of just and equitable. Losses when the business of the company cannot be carried out except at a loss a losses. There is no any chance of profit. In such cases that is not practically possible to run the business with the losses and in that cases you are supposed to be close your business. Fraudulent object another ground if the business or the object of the company are fraudulent or illegal. Fraudulent is the one illegal second and become illegal with the changes in the law. So, there are three situations where your business should be closed. If in the opinion of court it is established that the object of the company become fraudulent, illegal or illegal in changes circumstances. For example, few days back government running with the object of allowed the gambling in the society. But after some time if government introduced the policy, the ban the gambling in the society. So, if you establish a company to run the gambling business in such cases your business become nowadays illegal. You are supposed to be close your business. So, that is also one of the area which touch by just and equitable. On this ground the companies may be wound up. Petition of winding up under section 272 a petition filed before the tribunal for winding up and who present this petition who are authorized to file this petition. Very first company itself also permitted to file a petition of winding up. Any contributory or contributories may file the petition of winding up. There is no any restriction on the part of contributories. You may be consider here shareholders. Shareholders and you may be consider here members. All three terms refers to one thing either you say contributory, either you say shareholders, either you say members, all things indicate here you participate in the investment process of the company. All or any of the persons specified in clause A or B, either the you are a company, either you are a member you are authorized to file a petition of winding up and registrar also allowed to file a petition of winding up 
and the grounds of the same mention already we discussed in section 271 any person authorized by the central government it means this section also authorized to central government through any person they may file a petition of winding up and central government or the state government also authorize under this section to file the petition of winding up so there is the wide scope of filing the petition of winding up a contributory shall be entitled to present a petition of the winding up of a company he may be the holder of fully paid up shares or partly paid up shares that is e material thing. Material thing is here your name recorded in the company's member register that is enough to file a petition of winding up being a contributory. The central government shall not accord its sanction to the registrar unless the company has been given a reasonable opportunity of making representation. In the legal arena, notice is an essential condition for taking any action against anyone. Basically, notice is the part of principle of natural justice and principle of natural justice demands that when you take action against anyone, you must follow these principles which refer in the form of principle of natural justice. And very first principle in the category of principle of natural justice is opportunity of hearing that must be provided in each and every case. A petition presented by the company for winding up before the tribunal shall be admitted only. Here legislature use word shall, shall indicate that that is the mandatory condition if accompanied by a statement of affairs in such form and in such manner as may be prescribed. So, this word shall indicate that statement of affairs should be there. If company file a petition, there are the three conditions here. One is file by company, the petition of winding up and that is mandatory requirement that statement of affairs should be attached with this petition. A copy of the petition made under this section shall also be filed with the registrar. It means one application you must file through the registrar and the registrar shall again the legislature use word shall. Registrar shall without prejudice to any other provision submit his views. It means tribunal also entertain the views of registrar. If the petition filed by company itself before the tribunal of winding up and time frame is also defined here within 60 days from the receipt of such petition their views of the registrar of companies must be coming before the tribunal before pass any order powers of tribunal in winding up of a company. So, this is the important area which type of powers used by the tribunal. There are a, a huge list is available, but out of this list we select some areas for your ready reckoner, for your knowledge point of view, for your immediate concern about the same. First either the tribunal dismiss the petition with or without cost, either impose the cost or without cost may dismiss the petition. That is the first right available to tribunal courts or any authority. They when listen any petition, they may be dis dismissed if not found substantial question in the same. Make any interim order as it think fits. Interim order is the first part and final order is the last part. So, in case of orders, there are the some uh, stages, one is interim order, another is final order. So, any interim order may be passed after listen the parties in during the petition of winding up. Appoint a provisional liquidator. Provisional liquidator, it means the first instance prima facie. If tribunal found this is a fit case of winding up, in such cases, tribunal may pass the order of appointment of provisional liquidator. 
and once a liquidator appointed by court for the purpose of finding up all the powers of the court transfer all the power of the company transfer to this tribunal for the functioning of the company and make an order for the winding up of the company with or without cost here the word we use dismiss once first stage and second stage if tribunal found this is a fit case in such cases winding up order may be pass and once a winding up order passed by the tribunal that's the duty of the tribunal they appoint the liquidator here for administer the property of the company and any other order as think fit so that is the discretionary power in the hands of tribunal tribunal may pass any other order also as they found fit according to circumstances there is not a list we provided to the tribunal you only pass this 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 these orders we provide some discretionary power to the courts and tribunals they apply this power according to the demand of circumstances so if any situation they face they may pass the order according to the situation order shall be made within 90 days from the date of presentation of the petition basically the beauty of this entire section is here the time frame is given within 90 days you take the cognizance your action may be in any way any direction but you are bound to take action and the time frame is given within 90 days you decide the petition before appointing a provisional liquidator tribunal shall give notice to the company and afford a reasonable opportunity to the company to make its representation generally before passing any order that's the duty of the tribunal first they listen the companies views of the companies must entertain because company is also a person in the eyes of law that is a juristic person and company also enjoy the rights and obligation so tribunal also bound we use legislature use word shall shall must these words indicate that that's a compulsion on the part of who exercise this power tribunal shall not refuse again shall not refuse to make a winding up order on the ground only that the assets of the company have been mortgaged for an amount equal to or excess of those assets or that the company has no assets assets either sufficient or insufficient or the assets mortgage this is immaterial thing this is the power of the tribunal to decide the petition of winding up assets are up to the mark or uh, more than the liabilities or less than the liabilities or the assets are mortgaged before someone these things are not important in case of winding up order tribunal may refuse to make an order of winding up where a petition is presented on the just and equitable ground so again i emphasize on this point here just and equitable ground basically governed by the discretionary power of the court or tribunal and there is no any straight jacket formula to find out these powers cover under just and equitable and these powers not cover under just and equitable so just and equitable is a blanket available before the tribunals or the court they may be fit any equation under this umbrella under this jacket so if it is the opinion that some other remedies are available to the petitioner then generally tribunal asks to exhaust these remedies if petitioner are acting unreasonably in seeking to have the company's winding up order instead of pursuing the other remedies then court dismiss the petition tribunal may ask the petitioner to exhaust other remedy and may be impose the cost on this petition so that is the total discretion of the tribunal direction for filing statement of affairs by tribunal 
So already we know that when winding a petition filed by the company, that should be attached with the statement of affairs. And section 274 related to the directions relate in the case of statement of affairs. Statement of affairs is to be filed only when a petition of winding up is filed before, by, before the tribunal by any person other than company. If other than company the petition file, the position or the views of the company must be listened by the tribunal. And when company itself file the petition, that should be attached the affairs of the company. And if third party file the petition, that should be here demand from the company the statement of affairs. The tribunal shall, if satisfied that the prima facie case for winding up of the company is made out by an order direct the company to file its objection. Two things in this entire proviso that prima facie, prima facie means on the first sight. When tribunal apply their mind in the case first time and they found this is a fit case for winding up, in such cases they may ask the company to file your objections along with statement of affairs. Statement of affairs basically the statement of property of the company, the assets, liabilities, obligations, entire things cover in this statement of affairs. Basically statement of affairs reflected in the way of real picture of the company. And the tribunal may allow a further period of 30 days. First 30 days here provided in this proviso and next 30 days also here provided. But that is on the basis of circumstances. If there is a demand of the circumstances, this 30 days period may be extended for further 30 days. Tribunal may direct the petitioner to deposit such security for costs as it may consider reasonable as a precondition to issue direction of the company. So this is also a discretionary power in the hands of co tribunal. They may ask to the petitioner you some uh, deposit this much amount as a cost or for the purpose of security. Any director or officer of the company contravenes the provision shall be punishable. If any provisions not follow by the any officer of the company or the director of the company, the punishment is here provided 6 month imprisonment or fine of 25,000 is here imposed and this fine may be extended to up to 5 lakh rupees or both punishments may be applicable against the officers of the company or the director of the, director of the company if they contravene any provision of the uh, winding up process. Any director or officer of the company if not follow the provision of law or the direction issued by the tribunal, they commit an offence that amounts to offence and the punishment is here provided 6 month imprisonment or fine and fine is here defined 25,000 rupees that may be extended up to 5 lakh rupees or the both penalties may be imposed. It means civil and criminal. Imprisonment when we use it means that is a criminal penalty and when we use the fine that is a civil penalty. Both type of penalties are imposed here against the officer of the company or the director of the company. Company liquidator deals by section 275 of the Companies Act 2013 and for the purpose of winding up of the company by the tribunal, the tribunal at the time of passing the order of winding up, when tribunal pass the order of winding up shall appoint, this word shall appoint an official liquidator or liquidator from the panel as the company liquidator. The panel is available for company liquidations. You may be select any person from this panel or maybe you, uh, you court tribunal may be appoint a fresh person 
as a liquidator. The provisional liquidator of the company as the case may shall be appointed from amongst the insolvency professionals registered under the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code 2016. Under this code, there is a provision of for insolvency professionals. They are expert in their field and they perform all the functions of liquidation very speedily and they are expertise in their particular field. So, you may be appoint the insolvency professionals also. Where a provisional liquidator is appointed by the tribunal, tribunal may limit and restrict his powers by the order appointing him or it or by a subsequent order. That is the absolute power in the hands of tribunal or court. When they appoint a liquidator, they gave the powers to the liquidator in restricted manner or a full flesh powers given to the liquidator. That is the total discretionary power in the hands of courts and tribunals. The appointment of the liquidator shall be declaration within 7 days from the date of appointment. You must notify this person act as a liquidator. From the date of appointment within 7 days, you notify their appointment. And interest of conflict, if there is a conflict of interest or lack of independence that must be clear on the part of this expert person. If any with the tribunal and such obligation shall continue throughout the term of his appointment. Conflict of interest that is one area lack of independence that is the second area. You must pass the test here. This person who act as a liquidator must pass this test that one is there is no any interest involved in this matter. Second, your independence should be reflected in your acts. You must act in a transparent manner. Power and duties of company liquidator under compulsory winding up. The all the power of the company automatically comes in the hands of liquidator and he carry on the business of the company. To do all acts and to execute all acts and execute in the name of the company, on behalf of the company, all deeds, receipts and other documents on the behalf of company. It means liquidator not act any activity on their own name all activities he perform on the name of company and under this process he may sell the immovable or movable property or actionable claims of the company by public auction or private contract. Private contract or public auction both opportunities are available before the liquidator he may take any action. To sell the whole of the undertaking of the company as a going concern, to raise any money required on the security of the assets of the company. So, very wide power given to the liquidator to deal in the form of winding up, in the process of winding up. To institute or defend any suit or prosecution or other legal proceeding, civil or criminal but these all proceeding on the name of the company, not on their own name. If he perform any activity on their own name, that is illegal. That is against the well settled principle of law, against the direction of tribunal or court. Intimation to company liquidator, provisional liquidator and registrar, that is refer in section 277. When tribunal pass any order of appointment of provisional liquidator or for the winding up of a company, it shall a period not exceeding 7 days cause intimation to be sent to the company liquidator or provisional liquidator and the registrar. So, all persons should be here informed about the same the winding up process start and the court pass an order of winding up. 
registrar shall make an endorsement to that effect in his record relating to the company and notify in official gazette. The again once this fact comes in the knowledge of ROC, ROC enter this fact in their own record and he publish in official gazette regarding winding up process start of this particular company. In the case of listed company, listed companies are such companies who are listed in the stock exchange. The registrar shall intimate about such appointment or order to the stock exchange where the security of the company are listed. So, if companies are not listed in any stock exchange, then no need to be informed to the stock exchange. This obligation only start when company is listed company. The winding up order shall be deemed to be a notice of discharge to the officers, employees and workmen of the company except when the business of the company is continued. So, this notice is just amount to intimation to these all category of employees, they are relieved from their offices where the tribunal has made a winding up order or appointed a company liquidator, such liquidator shall within 60 days from the order of some uh, order of winding up submit to the tribunal all detail reports about the assets and liabilities of the company. So, the purpose is here, this time frame given to the liquidator within 60 days you prepare your proposal how you act for the benefit of company and you submit this entire detail before the tribunal or the court within 60 days. This time frame is here given. Winding up committee may be constituted on the request of liquidator within 3 weeks. This is again, again and again in this entire process of winding up the time frame is given within 3 weeks from the date of passing of winding up order, the company liquidator shall make an application. That is the beauty of this act which they word use, that is draw the conclusion that the provision is mandatory or obligatory. When the legislature use such type of word shall must, it means these provisions are mandatory. Tribunal for constitution of winding up committee to assist and monitor the progress of liquidation proceedings by the company liquidator. And who act as member in this committee? Official liquidator attached to the tribunal, nominee of the secured creditors and professional nominated by the tribunal. So, representation of creditors also there and the expert person is also here to monitor the working of the liquidator. Company liquidator is here act as an convener or the chairman of the committee and the rest of the members supervise the functioning of this one and may suggest some remedial measures to make more effective this winding up uh, process. Company liquidator to assist and monitor following areas of liquidator function taking over assets, taking over the control on the assets, examination of the statement of affairs, recovery of property, cash or any other assets of the company including benefits derived from them, review of audit reports and accounts of the company, sale of assets, finalization of list of creditors and contributories contributories basically here members, compromise, abandonment and settlement of claims, payment of dividends if any, any other function as the tribunal may direct from time to time to the liquidator, preparation and submission of report. The company liquidator shall place before the tribunal a report basically the purpose of report here to aware the tribunal regarding winding up process with minutes of the meeting of the committee on monthly basis 
again the compulsion on the part of this entire committee in every month they conduct a meeting and this report duly signed by the members present in the meeting for consideration. The company liquidator shall prepare the draft final report for consideration and approval of the winding up committee. First duty on the part of liquidator, he submit the report before the liquidation committee and when liquidation committee is satisfied with the report and they sign on this report that must be submit before the tribunal or court for their consideration. The final report so approved by the winding up committee shall be submitted to submitted by the company liquidator before the tribunal for passing of dissolution order. So, from very first slide there are a lot of difference between winding up and dissolution. Winding up is a process and dissolution is the final end result of this winding up. Dissolution of the company by tribunal that is deal by section 302. The company liquidator shall make an application again legislature use word shall to the tribunal for dissolution of such company. So, finally, the end of the company comes with the dissolution order. After the affairs of the company have been completely wound up, the tribunal shall an application filed by the company liquidator or when the tribunal is of the opinion that it is just and reasonable make an order for the dissolution of the company and the company be dissolved from the date of such order. A copy of dissolution order within 30 days submit in the office of ROC. ROC is the public office and when you submit this copy of the order to the ROC, ROC record this order in their own record and must be published in official gazette for the purpose of rest of the purposes. Insolvency resolution and liquidation under the insolvency and bankruptcy code 2016. After introducing this code, the process of liquidation become very simplest and this process gave a power to the businesses, industrialists to exit from the business. Otherwise, in earlier days that is very difficult to be close their business. So, after 1st April 2017, the provision of section 271 clause 2 of the Companies Act 2013 on winding up due to inability to pay debts and voluntary winding up transfer to this insolvency and bankruptcy court. Section 304 to 323 of the Companies Act have been deleted and now deal by insolvency and bankruptcy court. So, insolvency and bankruptcy court 2016 applies to the matter relating to the insolvency and liquidation of the company where the minimum amount of the default is rupees 1 crore. So, this is the very initiative step taken by central government to provide the opportunity of exit. So, IBC code lays down two stages. One is insolvency resolution process. It is the stage during which financial creditors assess. There are the some type of creditors defined in this insolvency and bankruptcy code. Out of these creditors, one is known as financial creditor. Assess whether the debtor business is viable to continue and the options for its reorganization and restructuring is beneficial for the corporate entity. That is deal by insolvency resolution process. And liquidation is the other stage in case the insolvency resolution process fails, the liquidation process shall commence. So, there are the two stages refer in this code and second stage is liquidation which the assets of the company are realized to pay 
its creditors, it occurs when all the company's board members mutually agree not to continue the business and dissolve the company. So, there is a, some conditions applicable if you follow the route of insolvency and bankruptcy code. So, you must first satisfy himself that you fulfill these conditions. Corporate insolvency resolution process, IRP provides a collective mechanism to lenders to deal with the overall distressed position of the corporate debtor. And commencement of IRP deals by section 6, 7, 8 of the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code 2016 and that is deal by a financial creditor. So, there are three type of creditors deal by this uh, Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code and particularly these section deals with the financial creditor. And another type of creditors are operational creditor and unpaid operational debt can initiate on insolvency resolution process against a corporate debtor at the national company law tribunal. The defaulting corporate debtor, its shareholders or employees may also initiate voluntary insolvency proceedings. So, again these particular section empower to whom? shareholders may file the petition, employees may file the petition, which corporate debtor also, corporate debtor defaulting in such cases they file a petition. And the beauty of this entire insolvency and bankruptcy code reflected in the form of section 14. Before this code, this type of beauty will not found in statutory books moratorium declare under section 14. NCLT, NCLT National Company Law Tribunal orders a moratorium on the debtor's operation for the period of insolvency resolution process. This operates as a calm period during which no judicial proceedings for recovery, enforcement of security interest, sale or transfer of assets or termination of essential contracts can take place against the debtor. So, particularly this section 14 protect the debtor. Within the period of this moratorium, no any proceedings lie against this uh, debtor. Appointment of resolution professional that is deal by section 16, that is the expert person, national company law tribunal appoint an insolvency professional or resolution professionals. So, to administer the IRP entire process, the resolution professionals primary function is to take over the management of the corporate borrower and operate its business. They take the control of entire business on their hand and they act for the betterment of company or for the betterment of entire stakeholders. Creditor committee and revival plan under section 21, if possible that should be submitted. The resolution professional identifies the financial creditor and constitute a creditor committee. And each decision of the creditors committee require a three-fourth majority to pass any resolution. So, this is that again time frame is here given the beauty of this insolvency and bankruptcy code here, 180 days subject to a one time extension of 90 days the entire process should be complete within this time frame. If you not follow the entire process within time frame, it means you commit a wrong and NCLT take a serious note in these cases when you not complete the entire proceedings within time frame. And liquidation is the last aspect, initiation of liquidation which deal by section 33. The tribunal shall pass the liquidation order in the following cases, where failure to submit the resolution plan to the tribunal within prescribed time frame, rejection of resolution plan for non-compliance, decision of creditors committee based on three-fourth majority, contravention of resolution plan by the company. So, this is a section 33 basically empower 
to the tribunal to pass such an order. Appointment of liquidator that is deal by section 34. The resolution professional shall act as liquidator unless replaced by the tribunal on the appointment of a liquidator. So, section 34 is also a very important section who gave the important power in the hands of tribunal. Power and duties of the liquidator which define in section 35 and these powers and duties under the control of tribunal or within the direction of tribunal. So, verify the claims of creditor, take into custody the control of all assets and to take such measures to protect and preserve the assets, to carry on the business of the company for beneficial interests of the company and to sell the immovable and movable property, actionable claims, invite and settle claims of the creditors. These are the some powers, steps for winding up a company under IBC 2016 that is defined in section 59. Directors, partners of the company to submit a declaration that company does not have any debt. If company exercise the position of solvency, enjoy the status of solvency. It means that have the sufficient funds to meet their liability. Convene a general meeting and pass a special resolution within four weeks of submission of declaration. Declaration must be supported by the decision of the entire committee and appointment of insolvency professional that is expert persons who check the entire process and they follow the rules and regulation which laid down here. Resolution of the creditors is also important, creditors interest should be protected here by this resolution. Notice to the registrar and the board, commencement for winding up liquidation, uh, voluntary liquidation. The liquidator take over the company control in the, their own hand to deal each and every activity for the betterment of company or for the betterment of winding up. Timelines for completion of liquidation while winding up of the company. So, beauty of this IBC, Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code, you must complete the entire process within time frame. After that, dissolution order passed by the tribunal and dissolution order is the last stage to complete the life of the company. So, a speedy and efficient process for winding up of the companies has been provided under insolvency and bankruptcy court, who wish to stop their operations and realize their assets and compare to the compulsory winding up. So, this insolvency and bankruptcy court provide a chance to the entrepreneurs, industrialists to exit from the business. And if we summarize this entire discussion, we find out winding up of company is a process by which life of the company is brought to an end and its property administered for the benefit of all stakeholders. And during the winding up process, the company assets are liquidated and proceeds are utilized to settle debts and obligation of the company. A company may wind up in any of the following two ways, either the compulsory winding up order passed by the tribunal or the court and secondly deal by section 59 of IBC that is come into the existence in 2017 become operation in 2017. In nutshell, winding up of company under the Companies Act 2013, a complex and significant process that requires a thorough understanding of the legal provision and procedure and the affects various stakeholders including shareholder, employees, creditors, government and partners. Thank you.